So before we discuss branch prediction, let's have a reminder of what a branch does in a pipeline. A branch instruction like this will compare registers R1 and R2, and if they are equal, jump to the label. This is usually implemented by having in the immediate part of the instruction field the difference between the next instructions PC and the PC that should be at the label so that the branch effectively, if R1 and R2 are equal, will just add the immediate operand to its current PC. So that the branch, if R1 and R2 are equal, will add the immediate operand to the PC that it computed for the next instruction. Now the problem with branches is that if the branch condition is not met, just increment the PC. For example, if the size of the branch instruction is 4, then the PC will just move by 4 bytes. However, if the branch condition is satisfied, in this case if R2 and R1 are equal, then the branch will increment the PC and also add the immediate to it, so the next instruction we fetch will be at this label. Now let's look at what happens when a branch goes through a pipeline. Let's say we have our classical pipeline with a fetch, read, ALU, memory and write stages, and let's say that towards the end of the ALU stage we actually figure out if a branch is taken or not. In the first cycle we fetch this branch, in the second cycle the branch moves here where it reads the operands, so it's reading R1 and R2 but we have no chance of telling whether the branch will be taken or not. So we either don't fetch anything here, or we fetch something here. Let's say we fetch some sort of a green instruction here. At the end of this cycle, we still don't know whether the branch will be taken. We have now read R1 and R2, but we haven't compared them yet. So when the branch is in the ALU stage, the green instruction we have fetched after the branch moves here, and we fetch another instruction, let's say that's a purple instruction, at the end of this cycle, we finally know whether the branch is taken. Now there are two possibilities. Either we have fetched the correct instructions, for example, the branch is not taken and we have taken the instructions that follow the branch. The branch is not taken, that means the PC just gets incremented and we fetch the right instructions, in which case we have no bubble in our pipeline. We can just proceed, we fetch the right instructions. The second possibility is that the branch, for example, is taken and we fetch the next instructions in which case we have to cancel these instructions. In the next cycle, these two cancelled instructions move on through the pipeline, and we finally fetch the instruction that we know is correctly fetched. So what happens is, if we correctly guessed what should be fetched after the branch, then there is no penalty, the branch finishes, and then the next instruction will finish right after the branch. However, if we mispredicted what will happen during the branch and we fetch the wrong things, then the branch effectively took three cycles to execute, because the branch actually finishes in one cycle, but then there are two empty cycles when we don't finish anything. So overall, the cost of the branch was really three cycles instead of one in our pipeline, meaning the branch cost us one cycle, which is normal for every instruction, plus two cycles because of a misprediction. Now you also see why it never pays to not fetch something after the branch. If we don't fetch anything after the branch until we are sure what to fetch, then we are guaranteed to have two empty slots after the branch, so somehow in that case, regardless of whether we would have guessed correctly or not, we have a two-cycle penalty. So we'd rather have the two-cycle penalty some of the time than all of the time. Another thing that is important to note is that at the end of the fetch cycle where we fetch the branch, we don't really know anything about this instruction yet. We have just obtained the instruction word, meaning the four bytes that represent an instruction, but we haven't even begun decoding the branch. So what happens is, next cycle, we have to fetch something based only on the knowledge of the branch's address. We don't even know whether it's a branch or not. So when we are fetching an instruction, we don't even know it is a branch, but we already have to make a prediction of whether it's a taken branch.